Thank you very much, Faith, and good morning, everybody. I had nothing to do with this study. <laughs> I just happened to be an old lady who was around at the time that the Human Rights Resource Center was set up uh, years ago, um, and I was lucky to have been there. So please, I have nothing to do with this. It's just incidental, because if you are as old as I am, you will be everywhere as well. <laughs> yeah, but... Uh, um, <laughs> you know, Associate Dean, Professor Concepcion Hardereza, Professor Saul and Elizabeth Pangalanan, and congratulations. Uh, behind every man's success is a woman. <laughs> uh, distinguished uh, discussants and guests, ladies and gentlemen, in behalf of the Board of Directors of the Human Rights Resource Center, or HRRC, and our board chair, former ASEAN Secretary General and High Commissioner of Singapore to Malaysia, His Excellency Ong Eng Yong, I am pleased to be with you at the Philippine Roadshow of the HRRC study on freedom of thought, conscience, and religion. Inspired by Article 22 of the 2012 ASEAN Human Rights Declaration, which in turn has echoed Article 18 of both the United Nations Declaration of Human Rights as well as the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights on this important uh, basic freedom, HRRC embarked on this study that looked at the uh, three major aspects of freedom of thought, conscience, and religion in the 10 member states of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations. These aspects are the following. Number one, the legislative and policy frameworks and their implications for the broad range of activities relating to the freedom of thought, conscience and religion organized around the topics highlighted for reporting and analysis by the UN Special Rapporteur on Freedom of Religion or Belief. Second is the trends in the freedom of thought, conscience and religion, which analyzes significant changes and trends in state law and or policies, activities or developments related to the freedom that we thought about, uh, we uh, talk, uh, talked about, and three, contributing factors and surrounding circumstances behind these changes in law and or policies by the state as well as events and trends. Based on the 10 country reports, the study has a synthesis report that may be described very briefly in the following way. Number one, it outlines significant events of religious persecution and conflict that takes place in the ASEAN region. Number two, it offers a number of key observations of the factors that lie beneath and motivate religious persecution and conflict. Number three, it highlights some trends across the ASEAN region that could either improve or worsen religious persecution and conflict. Number four, it looks at religious persecution and conflict as domestic concerns with likelihood of regional complications. Uh, the research uh, project is led by Jacqueline Neo of the National University of Singapore. She and 10 country rapporteurs benefited from the guidance of six expert advisors, namely David Cohen of the WSB Hunger Center for Human Rights and International Justice at Stanford University, and a member of the HRRC Advisory Board, Kevin Tan of National University of Singapore, and also a member of the HRRC Board, uh, Tor Lindbom from the Norwegian Center for Human Rights at the University of Oslo, Paul Durham and Brett Sharp at the International Center for Law and Religion Studies at Brigham Young University, and Sidney Jones of the Institute for Policy Analysis and Conflict. The HRRC study seeks to support the ASEAN Intergovernmental Commission on Human Rights of Asia in its dual mandate of promoting and protecting human rights and fundamental freedoms of the peoples of ASEAN. And some of the study's conclusions include the following. Freedom of thought, conscience, and religion can result in the reduction of violent persecution and conflict. That's the first uh, major conclusion. Second is that interfaith dialogue, when mediated by the state as a neutral arbiter, can have positive outcomes. Number three, I think uh, the emphasis is neutral arbiter uh, on the second one. The third is that popular education and mutual respect for religious differences can mitigate religious persecution and conflict. Number four, respect for fundamental freedoms, including freedom of thought, conscience, and religion, is conducive to peace and stability. Thus, number five, ASEAN member states must deliver on their commitment to promote and protect the fundamental human rights of their peoples as individuals, 
and as collectivities. In view of the richness of the study, and not having had a direct hand in its making, as I said earlier, I would do a great injustice when I to summarize it all for this esteemed audience. I will therefore leave the rest of our country rapporteur for the Philippines, Professor Raul Pangalangan, who is also a judge at the International Criminal Court. Congratulations to you. Uh, I think I'm in order, and of course, to death. Um, our panel of distinguished discussants uh, that include the uh, attorney Ishak Pastura, uh, uh, attorney um, Bakani, and Professor Grace Hamon. Uh, together, I'm highly optimistic they will provide us with a lot of food for interactive discussions here and food for thought beyond this present roadshow. Maboyang Pilipinas, and thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you, Faith.